I've had a lot of really wonderful teachers in my life, but there's one who consistently comes to mind. Uh, her name was Miss Kimball, and she was my fourth grade teacher. And I finally figured out she must have stayed after class a couple of hours because she would write in the smallest possible handwriting a series of Greek myths on the board, which was the first time I had ever been exposed to them. And at that time in my life, I was a fairly lonely child. And I had been reading, but you know, Nancy Drew, Cherry Ames, that kind of thing. But when I read the, these Greek myths, I was astounded. And I re remember something shifting in me, that there were possibilities, there were places, there, there, was, um, there were worlds that I could enter. So I, I owe this woman a great debt of gratitude. Um, and I also wanted to I connect a story to Miss Kimball that happened when, I, okay, Bob, I'm sorry. I just was losing it there for a minute. Can that be? Sure. I'm sorry. Okay. It's like I didn't get the transition. Okay. And okay, was the first part of it? Yeah, right? that's fine. Okay. But we can just just start where you and want to start. And keep going. Okay. So this teacher, re, thinking of this teacher brings back the memory of the student? Yes. Yo, I, I, you know, okay, I wanted to say something, and I, I don't know if I can work it into what I already said, which is that she did it out of love. She didn't do it as an elitist who was going to allow us into the club. She did it out of passion for these stories. And I really think they changed my life and they sparked my interest in, in, in visual things as well as in poetry. So many, many, many years later, uh, I began to teach at a community college and I was teaching one day D.H. Lawrence's The Horse Dealer's Daughter. And the main character is a young woman named Mabel Purvis. And she is depressed, repressed, um, isolated. She is not, she can't have a relationship. Uh, and her family's fallen apart. And on the day that the house is being sold, she leaves and she walks away and walks towards the pond and walks into a pond, into the pond, and to drown herself. And as she's doing that, the town doctor, Jack Ferguson, sees her. He's nearby and sees her, and he too is someone who's repressed and depressed and lives through his patients who are you know, more emotive than he. And he goes in against his instincts not to go in, but he goes into the pond and he saves her life. And that ex extraordinary experience broke through their defenses and these two find each other and fall in love. So the next day I go to the faculty mailboxes and I find a note in mine from a student from that class. And it said, Dear Professor Hillringhouse, I'm sorry I can't come back to your class again, but I am Mabel Purvis. I am exactly like her, and I'm going home, I'm going back south to try to save my relationship with my boyfriend. And I wish I knew what happened, but I never found out, but she never did come back to class. And this, this made me think about, not, it wasn't my teaching, certainly, but I think it was something that Miss Kimball did, which was to open up the literature to 
to us, it wasn't a private club. It wasn't something that had a special key, that had a special lexicon. It, it was um, Miss Kimball's love for her, for those myths. That's what mattered. And I, I love that story, so I hope that I'm not putting myself in the same category necessarily as Miss Kimball, but I think loving literature and never thinking it's just mine may have made a difference because that student read that story in her way and just never forgotten it.